always try to design for the future. There's a lot of things incorporated in this shop that we haven't even really instilled yet. Uh, there's three heat sources. Uh, the biomass burner, which is not in yet, the solar, which we haven't quite decided on yet, and then the LP backup. This has kind of become the hub of activity. We never really had a good place to have a meeting room to bring vendors or employees into and discuss plans or goals or uh, possible new purchases or anything to do with the input related materials. That shop office really opened up a lot of stuff that we could do with presentation and events that we have out here with tours. Yeah, it was a bit of a science project. We did a lot of research. There's uh, cellulose, insole safe three in the walls. So there's a foot in the walls, there's three feet in the ceilings. And then the key to it is uh, with it, radiant in-floor heat is the product that's under the floor. We use a product from Farm Tech called Tech Foil. And it's vinyl, heavy duty vinyl bonded to bubble wrap, bonded to aluminum. That's a 100% radiant barrier, so no heat can radiate down. And then on top of that, we put two and a half inches of dowel board and then stapled our PEX tubing to that. That way, our PEX tubing sits at the bottom of that thermal mass, and we can use all of that concrete as thermal mass when, when we eventually go to solar. That'll be important so that we can store that heat in the floor and have a lot more mass on a sunny day. Uh, energy efficiency in this building is phenomenal with the super insulation, and the solar gain, we estimate we get about 25% of our heat just from passive solar. Uh, we heated this entire structure. Last year was brutally cold. It's probably one of the worst winters we've had on record. And we heated this entire structure with about 700 gallons of LP gas. Um, that's with no biomass and that with the passive solar, obviously. We think we can probably reduce that in half just by using the active solar when we go to the panels. The beauty of radiant in-floor heat is we're really not heating much above the eight or 10 foot level where we're working. As long as you don't have fans and circulate that air, the heat tends to stratify and surprisingly, the warm air stays down near the floor with the cold air on top. The floor itself is a polished concrete floor. After the floor cured for 60 days, a company called Coolcrete came in and took them about a month to polish it. They start at 40 grit and they work up until they get to 3000 grit with diamond polishing blades and there's no finish on the floor, so it can't crack, peel, or fade. And they stain the basketball court into the floor at about 400 grit, and then they continue to polish, and that hardens it and makes it basically impervious. One of the things we did when we were building this shop was interviewed a lot of farmers that had built shops recently. The thing that we heard the most <coughs> about the doors and the sidewalls was the door isn't big enough and the sidewalls aren't high enough. We alleviated both of those problems with 20 foot sidewalls and a 20 by 40 Schweiss overhead hydraulic door. One of the goals in the shop was to make everything portable so that when an airplane comes in or a big planter comes in and we need to unfold it or we need to work on it, there's not a workbench in the way, there's not a cabinet in the way, there's not something hanging on the wall that's going to interfere with that piece of equipment. So we made everything mobile. All the toolboxes, all the workbenches, except the welding table and the oil, the fluids rack are mobile. We have clear story windows in this building. That's not a new concept. That goes back to Roman times and Frank Lloyd Wright actually re rebirthed these windows. Uh, really like the concept. At 44 degrees north latitude, the formula calls, it's called the one, two, three principle. You build a two foot overhang, you build a foot below that and you build a three foot window. That gives us our first direct sunlight about September 20th and we lose our direct sunlight about April 20th when we need it at the peak of winter, December, January, we're getting our maximum passive solar with that, with that system. And we think, there's really no way to quantify it, but we think we're getting about 25% of our, our heating just with the windows on the south side. I bought this from a police department. Uh, when I bought it, they said, uh, you will take that off, correct? I said I would. I just didn't really tell them when, and that was about 10 years ago. So I'm, I'll still take it off, I just don't know when.